Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking exploding logo effect using Adobe Illustrator and After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to create a logo. So I'm just in Illustrator here, I've just created a new document and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the line tool, I'm just gonna hold shift, I'm gonna draw a line down just like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the selection tool and I'm going to hold option on my keyboard and then I'm just gonna drag it out probably about 60 pixels and then command D to keep those lines going. You don't need too many lines, about six or seven will be fine. Then what I need to do is I need to copy in that by pressing command C and then if you go to edit, paste in place, it will put it directly on top and then I'm just gonna rotate it until it looks something like that. Now what I need to do is I need to get the ellipse tool and I'm just going to start in this corner and I'm just going to hold shift so it's a perfect circle and I'm going to do the same for the next one as well. So now that I have all of my ingredients, what I need to do is I need to command A to highlight it all and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it until it gets to that point there and now I'm just going to start filling it in with the shape builder. Cool, so now that you've done that, all I did is I just changed the color by just flipping this and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy and paste that into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and I've just downloaded this template. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to double click on this layer and this will open up our designs. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna press Command A to select all then just press delete and then just copy and paste our Illustrator logo in here. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger, just like that. Put it in the middle and then when I'm done, I can just press close and I can just save it and it will now go into that rest of that template, which looks pretty cool. But we do need to get rid of a few things. So the first thing that we need to do is get rid of the text and we can get rid of the adjustments as well, even the background. And we need to start worrying about the effects on there because the more effects that you have, um, it's just gonna look a little bit weird in uh, Adobe After Effects. So get rid of the shadow, um, pretty much leave everything except the bevel, or if you don't want the bevel, you can uh, leave that off. And then once you're happy with this, then all you have to do is just go to File Export and export this as a PNG, and then we'll put it into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects, and the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a new composition. So I'm just gonna run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document. Uh, 30 FPS, probably about 10 to 15 seconds, press OK. Cool, so now once you have that, the next thing you need to do is you need to import your logo and then just drag it to your timeline. So I'm just gonna adjust the scale. I don't want the logo to be too big, but I don't want it to be too small as well. So maybe something like that will be good. And then once I've done that, all I need to do is just go to layer, pre-comp, and then just call this logo. Make sure you move all the attributes. So now I have the logo in a pre-comp. Now what we can do is we can start to add our effects on here. So the first effect that we are going to add is the shadow effect and you can see what is actually happening here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the view to rendered and now you can see it shatters our logo like that. And that looks pretty cool, but we're gonna change it up a little bit. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go and open up the shape and I'm gonna change it from bricks to squares and triangles and you can see that it changes it up slightly. So I'm just gonna change a few things in here as well. I'm gonna drop the repetitions to about eight and I'm also going to change the extrusion depth to zero and you can see what's happening there. I then am going to go to force one and I'm gonna change a few things in here. The radius I wanna put at uh, 0 0.1 so I don't want too many things happening so just a bit of a crack over there and I'm also going to change the strength really drop it down to 0 0.05 and so now if you've done that correctly now you will see you know a whole bunch of stuff is kind of like falling away from the logo that looks pretty cool but we need to now go to physics and change a few things in there so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm just going to change the gravity to zero so that's going to stop that falling so now you can see that it cracks and kind of just you know hangs there then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to change the rotation speed to 0 0.35 and i think that looks pretty cool that's uh nice and neat and then what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna duplicate that logo. So I'm gonna press Command D to duplicate and I'm just gonna rename that to two 
and now we're going to duplicate this a few more times so the first thing that we're going to do in this second duplicate is we are going to open up the shape settings we are going to open up the repetitions and we're going to change that to 30. the other thing that we are going to do is we're going to change the patterns to glass and so now glass will have like that cool kind of shatter effect and we're going to keep on going so the next thing that we need to do is we need to open up the four settings we need to go to the strength and we're going to change that to 0.6 and then what we are going to do is we are going to animate the radius so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit that stopwatch for radius and i'm going to change the value uh probably about 0 0.08 and you can see i'm starting at two seconds i'm going to go all the way to five seconds and then i'm going to change that value to 0 0.6 and so now if you scrub through that, now you can see it starts to shatter and then the pieces fly off until the end of the composition. So I think that looks pretty cool. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to go to physics and we're gonna change up a few things in here. We're gonna change the mask variance to let's say 40 and we are going to change the rotation speed to 0.6, all right? so. That's what that looks like. And we are going to duplicate that again. So now when I duplicate that, this one is number three. So we're just gonna go back into the shape, make sure that it's on glass. We're gonna change the repetitions to 50. So we're just gonna, you know, randomize it a little bit. We are going to go to the force one settings and we are going to change the strength to 0.5. We are going to change the mask variance in physics we're going to change that to let's say 32 and we are also going to change the rotation speed to 0.45 and cool and so now we've got two bits of shattering you know logo that goes like that and i think that's looking pretty cool but we're going to duplicate it again so i'm going to press command d to duplicate that for the next time so this is number four I'm gonna open up the shape settings and this time I'm gonna add uh, probably about 150 to the repetitions. And now you've got those real fine effects over there. Maybe we'll even go to about 170, maybe even a little bit bigger. We'll also go to the force one settings. We'll change the strength to 0 0.55. Uh, we will then go to the physics settings and we will change, we'll just increase the rotation speed to 0.48. And then what we are going to do is we're just gonna bring down that mass variance and we're gonna put it to about, let's say 28, something like that. You can play around with some of these settings, but I think that has a really cool kind of shatter effect. And that's looking pretty cool. So on the bottom logo layer, what we're gonna do is we are going to add some glow and I'm just gonna change the th uh, threshold, bring it up to 100%, change the glow radius to about 100%, and then also change the glow intensity to about two. And you can see that there's a touch of glow in the background. And I think that's looking pretty cool. We are also going to add a blur kind of map over here as well. So now to make it blurry, what we need to do is I'm just gonna create a new solid and i'm just going to make sure that it's a white solid and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to click away and i'm going to click on that ellipse tool make sure that i have a black shape i'm just going to click on the title and action safe and i'm just going to hold command and shift and i'm going to draw a circle probably something like that and then i'm going to take that off we don't need that anymore and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to pre-comp both those things and i'm just going to call that map all right and then inside of that map on that black solid, I'm just gonna add the effect called Gaussian Blur. And I'm just gonna bring that up to about, let's say 200. And if you uncheck that repeat edges box, now it will be all smooth, just like that. Now I don't need the map there to be able to see it, but if I go and create another new adjustment layer, and if I add the effect called Camera Lens Blur, now I can change a few settings in here. So I'm gonna change the blur radius to maybe something like 12. I'm gonna change the uh, shape to probably about an octagon and I'm gonna change it to our map setting. So you can see that that circle is very in focus and everything else 
is uh, not so much in focus, which is exactly what we want. So now that I've got that, now we need to work on the background. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click and go new solid. Doesn't matter what color you put in there. I'm just gonna label it BG. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag it down to the bottom and I'm gonna search for the effect called gradient ramp. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to color hunt and I've chosen this color palette. So I'm going with a dark blue kind of theme and I'm just gonna change the white in here and I'm gonna change it to a radial ramp. And then I'm just gonna move this point maybe somewhere like that and even move this point there. And then maybe swap colors just so it looks something like that. Then going back into the adjustment layer, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some curves in here. So maybe I'll drop it down a bit like that and bring up this bit over here. So now you can see that it kind of a bit darker in there and I think that looks pretty cool. And then finally on here, I'm also going to add the CC vignette and this will just, you know, kind of darken the edges as well. I'm just gonna bump that up to about 150, something like that. So now we've got some really dark edges in there and I think that looks pretty cool. Now the final thing that we can add in here is another adjustment layer and I'm just gonna add some noise in here as well so maybe bump up the noise to about 10 percent something like that and now you're pretty much done with that exploding logo the only thing that you can worry about in here i guess if you go and um to all your duplications and press uh, u to bring up all your keyframes firstly you can easy ease these keyframes um by going to easy ease or pressing f9 but also you can start them a little bit earlier as well so now you'll see when it starts to shatter, you know, probably about there. Now you'll see that the rest of the, the logo will also shatter with it as well. Now, the only other thing I did add in my version is a little bit of glow um, to the edge of this logo. So to do that, you will need to have a special plugin called uh, Ecto. All I did is I just changed it to match the colors from Color Hunt as well. And I just changed some of the settings as well. Like for example, the glow intensity to maybe say 0.7 and the size, you know, we can bring it down to, I don't know, like maybe half of that. Depends on what you want. So that was the only thing uh, that I did. And then I also added a lens flare for the shadow parts. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this short tutorial on how to create an exploding logo. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you guys in the next video.